students and special invited guest, Mr. Isaiah Dorr and uh, Kristen Rice from the RSL. Can we please stand, gentlemen, to welcome our official session. Thank you. foster care had texted me and said I was no longer able to live with them. 
And when it, when it came to the time when I was trying to complete my high school certificate, I wasn't focused on the papers. I was thinking, where, about, where was I gonna live after I finished my papers? I mean, I had to leave, leave school. I was a boarder at this school. And I had no support, I had no family. I just didn't know what exists outside of foster care, let alone um, at the boarding school. So my name is Isaiah Dorr, and I'm a Bachelor and Gullah man, and my skin name is Yakamani, and this is my story. So I was born in Paddington's Women's Hospital on the 3rd of June in 1994. At just two months old, I was taken from my family and put into the foster care system. A couple of years had passed, and I was placed back into my father's care. But I didn't stay there for too much longer, and we lived in this small little caravan park. It had nothing but a, to a toilet, a bed, and a sink. And I was then placed into foster care again because I was physically abused by my father. The last thing I remember before being removed from his care is waking up in a speeding car and having blood all over me, and then blacking out again, and waking up with multiple stitches in the back of my head, and with a neck brace on. And so I was then considered a ward of the state, meaning I was to stay into the foster care system until I was 18 years old. Uh, and as I grew up in care, I was taken away from my sisters, I was taken away from my family, I, I never knew their whereabouts. And I was placed into many non-Indigenous people's homes and I was, I was told that these homes were going to be uh, a new safe place, haven for me, but it was far from it. A lot of the foster care placements were abusive to me and my younger sister. And when I was in these strangest people's homes, I would, they would say to me, Isaiah, they'd get inches away from my face to care. They'd say, Isaiah, you're a nobody. They'd say, no one's going to love you in your life. They'd say, you belong in jail, just like your parents. And when I grew up in care, I had so many different suicidal thoughts and there were days I would pray that I wouldn't wake up in the morning and that it would all be a dream and I would wake up and be able to call someone, a mum and dad. But every day that I got up, I was disappointed and that never come, become a reality for me. But the one thing that kept me from completely going in those, in those tough times was, I had my younger sister, and you know, she was someone that, that was my only family that I ever knew of. And so, we used to say to each other, it's you and me against the world, because that's all we ever had. And while my experiences at home weren't great, either was my school. You know, I had to repeat year four, I had to do reading recovery, I couldn't even spell, read, write my name. And as a teenager, I was, I was pretty active in, in sports, and I loved rugby league. And it got to a point where I was fortunate enough to go to a, an all-boys boarding school, another Marist school, called St. Gregory's College in Campbelltown. And that's where I truly felt a sense of belonging, and I found my, my purpose in life. And when I, went, when I got to St. Gregory's College, mind you, I, I was quite shocked. I mean, I had to wear the blazer, the tie, uh, the, collared, the collared shirt, the dress shoes. I had to pull up my socks, and I was always told by my teacher to pull up my socks. And so for me, at that point in time, when I first went there, I had a blonde streak from one side of my head to the other. I used to wear my hat, not to the front, not to the back, but to the side a bit. I had a few rat's tails, and they were plaited, and they were blonde as well. And so from going to this school, I felt like it was a relaxed beach Sunday to feel like James Bond or something. And as the school's motto for St. Gregory's College is, what you sow, so shall you reap, meaning what you put into life is what you get out of it. And, and mind you, at that point in time, I wasn't really doing anything with myself. I was, when I first went, got to St. Gregory's College, I was on detention most of my um, lunches. And so all the boarders, when we used to eat together, they used to say, I say, where, where are you, man? Do you, do you eat with day boys? And I'm like, nah, man, I'm, I'm just always on detention. Like, you're never here. I'm always on detention. And so, it was, all, it was all going well for me, and it got to that point in time where I was in year 12. You know, I, I made note to myself that when I started year 12, I was going to do better and apply myself. And at that point in time, when I was traveling back to St. Gregory's College on the boarding school bus, the text I got from my carer was, look Isaiah, and I lived in these, these carers for a very long time, for three years. And they said, look Isaiah, you're no longer welcome here. Um, Grab your bags from foster care, just like that. And so 
when I was in foster care as well, at that point in time, I'd, I'd been through 17 different foster homes. i moved uh, many different homes, uh, and I never really felt that sense of belonging, but the school was there for me. And eventually I was offered to, with no support or payment or reimbursement, there was a, a family called the Valerius, and they were an Italian family in Griffith, New South Wales, in this country town, and they offered to take me and my younger sister in, which I'm forever grateful for. There's one thing I'm also grateful for is when I was growing up, I was able to learn from a man named Eric Bell. And he was the number one Aboriginal elder in the community. And a lot of the times, he worked you know, seven days a week, 14 hour days. I never really got to see him that much. His, his food was always in the microwave. He was never at the dinner table with us. And he was a funny old father. He, he received the Order of Australia medal in 2011 in this small country town. And it's the acronym for the Order of Australia medal, OAM. He used to call it the old Aboriginal medal. And then you just get one when you're a certain age. And so it, I, I, my purpose was found in my wounds. And when I went back to this small country town, he, he passed away from cancer. And when I was at his funeral, I heard all these amazing stories and how he changed the community for the better. And I realized at that point in time that I wanted to leave his legacy on and be of the same stature. So when I got back to my community where I was living, in Redfern, I started to apply and walk in his, uh, and follow his positive footprints that he left behind. And I was able to eventually find my family. So when I was 18, I got all these texts from family members and they were introducing themselves and, um, and, and showing me, and they say, hey, I'm uncle so-and-so, this is how I'm related to you. Uh, we never stop loving you and we can't wait to meet you. And I met them uh, just a couple of years ago and it was phenomenal. Um, it, it filled a huge gap in my heart coming back onto country. And so after my negative experiences in foster care and hearing all these similar stories like mine, if not worse, I heard a quote by Johnny Lewis. It says, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? And so I was prompted to start my journey to support Aboriginal youth in foster care. And so after working consistently and tirelessly for three years, and I stayed up to 2 a.m. as well most nights, I'm now the founder and CEO of a unique mentoring organization called ID Know Yourself. And ID Know Yourself is the first Aboriginal mentoring organization in New South Wales to support Aboriginal youth in our home care. And when I wanted to start up ID Know Yourself, they said, you can't do that. And these are people I would, would have supported me, said, Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah. Come on, let's be reasonable here. They're not going to let you be a CEO. Give me a break. I said, thank you for that. And I kept doing my thing anyways. I've realized that a lot of people in your life, the reason why they can't see it for you is because they can't see it for themselves. Most of the young Aboriginal people who are now in care don't have a choice. They take it from their culture, identity, a sense of belonging, um, their sense of, uh, of, of purpose and fulfillment in their lives. But at Idy Know Yourself, we give them choice. Choice to show them that it doesn't matter where you come from in life, what matters is where you're going. And the power of possibility is incredible. And I always told myself, despite my circumstances, I always looked beyond my circumstances of where I was currently, on where I wanted to be. And so I thought to myself, it was possible. I would never have imagined the opportunities that I've been able to do today. I, from a kid who couldn't even read or write, who had to repeat year four. And after keeping the mindset, I was the first Aboriginal person to receive the Take New South Wales graduate of the year. Mind you, people who studied that year was amongst 52,000 people. I was the first Aboriginal person appointed chair of the New South Wales Youth Advisory Committee. So we put in policies and recommendations to the government representing 2.4 million children and young people in New South Wales. I was the first Aboriginal person to be a part of the Indigenous team to sail on the Sydney to Hobart. You know, mind you, uh, I, I sailed on a big 70 foot yacht. I, I, never, I never sailed in my life. And mind you, the old fellas in the team, they said, I say, look, we've got this incredible opportunity for you. I said, yeah, what is it? They said, it's a sail on Sydney to Hobart. I said, mate, no worries. I said, yeah, but what's your experience, mate? I said, look, I've been on the Manly Ferry a couple of times. They're like, hey, mate, that's it, you're in. And so, I was on this big 70 foot yacht, I was the bowman, so I had to look up at the front of the yacht, and it was a phenomenal experience, three day journey, and I wanted to show that 
you know, it's not, it's not all about uh, what you know, it's about what you do that actually matters. And there were times that I would ask myself, well, can I do this? But by continuing to push forward, by continuing to run towards my dream, just as a 24-year-old, that one day I would have my own company. It's a long shot from Western Sydney Caravan Park with nothing but a bed and toilet and sink. It's a long shot being able to be here with you today, here in this amazing college. It's a long shot. No university degree, late and stupid and, and, and uh, dumb, but I kept running towards my dream. So whatever dream that you guys have, I'm telling you, hey, I've been there, I've told that you can't do it, you can't amount to anything in your life, that you belong somewhere else than where you're at. But hey, you can do it. So whatever it is, don't you stop. And then there is many times in life you'll come across failures. It's inevitable, you know, failing is a part of life. But I don't ever say, and you use this as well, don't ever say you're having a bad day, to say you're having a character building day. And even though you may not enjoy pulling up socks each day, wearing the correct uniform each day, standing up and greeting your teachers as they walk in each day, but I can tell you that these little reminders and keeping in this discipline, it's helped me whilst I'm running my own company. But I've realised as well that if you can't do the little things right, then how can you ever do the big things right? And as I said before, remember this, because this will help you throughout your life, that it's, it's not what you know, it's about what you do that actually matters. Thank you so much for your time this morning, and remember, stay strong and stay deadly, you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, I really appreciate that. It's an absolute honour to be here. Um, and the reason why I do what I do is because, like yourselves, the young boys who are here today will be the, the men of tomorrow, and that's you guys. And so, I just want to also take a little quick selfie, all right? So, pull the face, whatever you want to do, it's all good, probably can't see you for that part. All right, ready? <laughs> Too many of us. You can't fit it all in one photo. All right, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Dawes, for sharing your experiences with us today. I would now like to invite Walter House Captain Luke as a party to deliver a history of the Walter House. Good morning, Mr. Brennan, invited guests, teachers, and fellow men of science. As some of you may know, I am the Walter House Captain, that famous house of champions, but unfortunately, also the home of the wooden spoon for the last five years. But hey, the past is the past. Surely we can put that behind us. As our motto, veris ribus adversus, translate to in the simplest, no pain, no gain. Let me remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that Walter is built upon the determination and courage discovered in periods of hardship. Our man and father, brother Walter, Mary Ford, showed this Walter spirit in the toughest of times. 1942 was the height of the Second World War, and the year of which brother Walter was assigned head of saints. However, a looming fear of a Japanese bombing resulted in an order from higher powers that all schools in the area were to be shut down. Determinate, determined not to let such fears interrupt the schooling of students, Brother Walter set about finding an alternative location, eventually settling in the now Lake Drain Tea House. Brother Walter's determination and passion allowed for the persistence of school and its eventual return to Cairns in the later months of the year. Brother Walter's spirit remains within the ways of Walter House, visible in our ability to persist and bounce back back up again after difficult times, mainly our winning drought. Walter's most famous athletic product is four-time Triathlon World Cup champion and recently admitted Triathlon Australia Hall of Fame inductee Brad Bevan. Bevan was in the graduating class of 1985 and excelled as an athlete. 
as a student and Walter representative, Bevan set records in cross country and athletics, with his 13 years 1500 meter record still existing to this day. So what a proud history of overcoming adversity and creating opportunities for heroes. To be honest, one would have to admit that the last five years have been very painful indeed. But this year, we have lifted our heads high. We have got within a whisper of victory in swimming, athletics and cross-country events. A newfound passion and resurrection of our old competitive juices and determination has been witnessed. Even Doro has awoken to the possibility that Walter is hungry again for success. I know that every Walter warrior is frothing at the thought of smashing him, crushing Fiona and Reggie. Determination through difficult times is what Walter House is built on. As such, after five years of painfully lifting that wooden spoon, we hunger for victory. The prize of Champion House is still ours for the taking, especially when we sense that Reggie is edgy due to its angriness. So, with hope in our hearts, I leave you with words from one of Walter's wisest men. We are coming to get them, and get them we will. They are dead men. <laughs> Thank you very much, Luke. I would now like to invite Ms. Kristen Rice from the Cairns RSL to present a spirit of Anzac Award. Good morning, Mr. Brennan, uh, invited guests and uh, teachers and students here at, um, at the school. It's just fantastic to see. I've been going around all the schools today, uh, this week and last week. Um, I'm here. Uh, we uh, did a project at the Cairns RSL, um, and I suppose by way of introduction, I should say uh, I'm the new president there. Uh, I've been there for about a month, and uh, still finding my seat, my feet as president. But uh, so far, so good. Um, Harry, do you want to... mm. uh, what we did. The Cairns RSL in conjunction with the State RSL, we've also got another sub branch called District and the Cairns West uh, Edge Hill RSL. Is we put together a publication, and what it is is it's called the Spirit of Anzac for the Prison and Children, and we invited all schools and any student. Uh, you didn't necessarily have to have uh, family uh, to do with uh, any sort of defence service. Uh, and you volunteered to participate, and then it went through a selection process. Uh, and those selected uh, were put into the place into this publication. And not only that, uh, there was a winner. Uh, and not only that, there was an encouragement award. And that encouragement award went to Harry Hume. So, on behalf of the Cairns RSL, uh, I'd like to present the certificate. Uh, for the Encouragement Award um, in this publication, of which uh, I'll give you a couple of copies there, and also a $50 uh, gift card as well, and also a $100 Encouragement Award. So if we do this again next year, I encourage all the students here, as I've encouraged the students uh, around Cairns uh, to participate. Uh, it's been a uh, fantastic exercise, and it's just great to see that Anzac tradition living on uh, not just through those who have served. Uh, I'm ex-Navy myself, did 20 years and went through all sorts of operations and missions. Uh, but it's great to see, uh, especially on Anzac Day this year, uh, we had a fantastic turnout by, from the wider community. So thank you very much for your support and thank you, Harry, for uh, taking the challenge and taking the initiative, which is some of the qualities of becoming a, uh, a leader in the military. And it's great to see here that the discipline, uh, you can clearly see that it starts in the schools. So fantastic. Well done. Thank you very much, Ms. Rice, and congratulations once again to Harry. In Alistair's absence this week, I would now like to invite EB House Captain Felix Graf to, to deliver a sports report and present the senior season teams for 2019. Good morning, Mr. Brennan, staff, invited guests, and of course, fellow Men of Saints. 
We are coming close to the end of yet another fantastic CESA season, with all five teams showing why they deserve to be respected as championship contenders in each of their respective sports. Although the fantastic form throughout the year, Saints stumbled last week against our cross-region rivals, St Andrews, only securing two wins out of the five games and was a crucial double points round. However, the boys were able to bounce back yesterday afternoon, taking out three games over the five sports. All five of our teams will be heading into their respective semi-finals next week to decide whether or not they will play for it all. In other sports news, our junior football team, the Bill Turner side, have claimed a huge 8-0 win against St Andrews. Next week they will be lining up against Cairns High. All the best boys. We would now like to take the time to acknowledge and recognise the boys who will be representing our college next week. I would now like to call up each CC captain to come forth name your squads and please hold your applause till the end of each team. I'd now like to call forward the CESA AFL captain, Eli Davies. First up we have Connor Munro. Jordan Whateley, Nicholas Johnson, Patrick Brown, Josh Davies, Mitchell White, Oscar the Black Hammer Heron, Tilly Arnitush, Patrick Atlin, Silas Cameron, Ray Chambers, Jack Douglas, Harrison Gabella, professional runner Liam Gilbert, George McMahon, Lex Morgan, Harry Stephenson, Brock Wallen, Flynn Kiar, Aidan Conlon, and our manager, Carl Cashby, and our hydration expert, Brody Davis. Thank you, Eli. I'd now like to call for the season basketball captain, Jake Dempsey. First up, Trent Jensen. Archie Shills. Denzel Kome. Joseph Warzone. Lachlan Stanley. Marley Chapman. Zach Borso, our assistant coach Jackson Sharon, and hydration expert Christopher Burn Battle. Thank you, Jake. I'd now like to call for the CESA football captain, Casey Agnew.
much you can eat. Brian McCormack. You and Mr. Queensland Wyatt. William Johnson. Matt Brooks. Luca Poppy Gaddick. Alex McKay. Riley Gaddick. Matt Menico. Lockie Michelle. Ben Delarica. Vlad Liria. Jack McDonald. Waterboy turned player Toby Gillen. And the brains of the operation, Bryce Timmy. First we got Yago Group. Liam O'Reilly. Tyler Vincent. Brian Thiel. Marcus Yan. Simeon Matush, Oliver O'Malley, Kaya Crouch, Joel Davey, Leroy Kelly, Yapoi Ware, Ben Maloney, Jamie Moyle, and Jamal the Waterboy Mitchell. Thank you, Will. I'd now like to call for the Caesar Volleyball Captain. Brian Thiel. Lachlan Jensen. Kenton Wood.
Thank you for that, Felix, and, uh, and congratulations again to our CC representatives. I would now like to invite James Bleed to deliver this week's art report, as well as an update on the walk -along. Good morning, Mr. Brennan, staff, and Mena Saints. There are a plethora of upcoming events in relation to the arts, and a whole bunch of exciting stuff is happening, and will happen. First of all, earlier this week, the Grin and Tonic Theatre Company paid us a visit on Tuesday to present the performance called April's Fool, a thought-provoking insight for those who attended. There are also several exciting upcoming events, such as the Year 11 excursion this weekend to see Cannes High's musical Singing in the Rain. There is also a, few, um, also a huge shout out to the grade 10 visual art class who has their pop art exhibition in Tallies, if y'all want to check that out. There are also some more exciting events, such as on the 29th of May, the College Choir will be performing at the V, a uh, V concert, that is face to face, by the way, in case you guys are interested. And also on the 12th of June, there's the MEX concert happening at, the, at St. Monica's College. MEX is a music extension, we've got two music extension students here, so come along and support the guys. And also on the 15th of June, the uh, year 9 and 10 music classes will be performing at St. Joseph's. On the 25th of June, is the, on the 25th and the 26th of June, pardon me, is the Cannes of Stedford, where the College Choir and the Big Band will be performing. All of these events are on the St. Augustine's College Arts Department page. Also like the page if you haven't already, and ensure that these dates are popping up in your reminders. Also, one final note on the walk on is that you guys better get your money. You got two weeks left. There's a free day off school on the line. Get your forty dollars in, man. And if you guys have, if you guys raise that sixteen dollars, sixty dollars or more, there's a chance to get a JB Hi-Fi voucher and a plethora of other prizes you can win. Thank you. Now that this principal's address, I would like to invite to the stage Mr. Brennan. Thank you very much to, to Gabe for the introduction, the Reverend Brothers, to staff, our special guests here this morning, and obviously young men of saints. I'd like to start by thanking Mr. Dorr, Isaiah Dorr, for being here with us this, this morning. Isaiah arrived in Cairns uh, late yesterday. He spoke with many of your parents at a parent information evening that went till quite late last night and then obviously wanted to come this morning to speak to you whilst he was in Cairns. And I know he's got a flight back this morning back to meetings this afternoon in Sydney. So just on behalf of the college I'd invite Gabe to just present Isaiah with a little gift from all of us. Thank you. I was very lucky, as I've said to you many times, when I was appointed uh, principal here at St Augustine's and there was a number of things or documents or comments that were made to me about you as a community and the challenges that I would face in given the opportunity to lead this wonderful community and one of the first things that I was asked to consider is what would be a statement that would embody what we would want as, as St Augustine's young men. And you know I've used that logo a few times, pay it forward, which is one of the things I think is so important for us as a community. And it's something we do so well and we do so often, where we put others in front of ourselves to ensure that the lives of others are improved. And I know the work with Dr Lynch, but so many other ways done quietly by so many people to ensure that there are people in this community and, and in the broader community of Cairns, and in fact, the broader community of Australia and even in fact the world who are having a better day today because of the efforts of some of you. But I spoke with Year 12 on retreat one of the nights I was there and I also spoke with the staff at the beginning of this term to try and put this all into some sort of very easy sentence for me to remember I guess and for me to continually come back to remind myself on. And I think it was something, well I think, something I wanted to share with you this morning it was something I shared with Gabe as the school captain and others on retreat and Gabe and I spoke about it after Mass that we had on the retreat. And the statement is very, very simple and, it's, and it says, and it's on the screen for you there, 
But I think we need to build a community here, and there are many layers to this statement, but we need to build a community here at St Augustine's College, be the college that all adolescent boys in the area aspire to attend. And we do that through, through many, many different ways. And I said to the staff that it really, in many ways, begins, it has to start with me, I guess I'm ultimately responsible, but it starts with all of the staff. It starts, and I say staff, I don't just mean the teachers that work so hard in front of you every day. It's the, the maintenance team that you see every morning cleaning up, at the end of every recess and lunch cleaning up. It's the cleaners that are doing work in boarding houses and around classrooms, often when you're not there. It's the lovely ladies in the front office who make sure that the greeting visitors get, the paperwork so many of you have, the notes that you need, the messages that get sent out. All of those things build up this image that I would really want us to have. I want young men in Cairns to want to come to St Augustine's. Not because of me, and obviously the staff, but largely because of you and what you do. So you could probably ask your question, well, that's a great statement, Mr Brennan, and you know some of my friends want to come here and I like it here. But it really hasn't got a lot to do with me. But I, I challenge you all to ask yourself the question, so what has it got to do with you? And I think it's everything. Now, I know that I have a joke with many of you of a morning of an afternoon, and it's interesting. I, I didn't speak to Isaiah about what he was going to talk about. I, I was fortunate to, to be part of Isaiah's journey from year 10 to 12 at St Greg's. But I didn't know what he was going to say this morning, but the little things are something that he really focused on. And I know there's a number of you who I speak to regularly about uniform, about the way you are leaving the school. But again, if we want to have a community here, and this is only a very superficial level, but if we want to have a community here that people want to come to, first thing they're going to look at is what are the best people in there? How are they just conducting themselves in public? How are they wearing their uniforms? Because to me it says a lot. And I've seen a lot of the uniforms around Cairns and certainly around Sydney and around Canberra. And I think the way you wear your uniform says a lot. That your socks are up. And a lot of you have got very old socks that need replacing. I'll put that in a newsletter. You need to organise yourselves around that and I'll be helping you in the coming weeks. You know, is my shirt tucked in? Is my hair the expectation that we want here as a school? When I am out in public or even in private, what are my manners like? Is it something, you know, I always say the litmus test for me as a young person growing up, or well, my father told me this early, would your grandmother be happy with you behaving the way you're behaving? The answer is no. And obviously, we've got a few things we need to work on. So, for us to have young men wanting to come to this school, it really does start with you. There's a few things that we know about this place already. We know that we're the only Catholic all-boys school in the, in the diocese, or in the Cairns area, which is something that we should be very, very proud of. We know that we're the first established Mara school in Queensland, and that's something that we should be telling the world. We know how strong, we've only seen our sporting teams up here, we've seen Harry recognised. For those who don't know yet, our Moody competition, we went to the Gold Coast. They're in the national finals next week. Our debating teams, our junior and senior, are through to the grand final in a couple of weeks. Our first grade soccer team, we saw all of those first grade teams all in semi-finals. Our rugby league team's travelling well. Our Bill Turner Soccer Cup team won 8 nil. So we are doing very well across the across all spectrums of, of life, both in and out of the classroom. I, I think our mission and social justice program is as good, if not better, than any place I've ever been to uh, as an employer or as somebody who's worked in a Marist community. And I've already said how talented and how, working, uh, how hard working our staff are. So again, taking it one step further, that's what we know, but what about you as students? What, what should you be doing? What must I do? And I've said this already. The way you conduct yourself around Cairns and the way you conduct yourself around the school says a hell of a lot about what you think about the place and how much you value your position here in this wonderful community. And I know when I speak to you regularly, you do value your place. You are very proud of it. So it's something that oh, I would love to think we could come to a school, and I know we won't, but my dream and my hope, I guess, in this perfect school is that we never have to discuss uniform with you again. Don't you know when your shirt should be in? I don't have a problem with boys running around the ovals and basketball courts with shirts out and socks down. Nobody does. But there's a time and a place that you need to be dressed appropriately. And obviously you know those. 
So I'd like a place where we wouldn't have to talk to you about uniform. And I think the key thing there is when nobody's watching. And I'll tell you a story in a moment. We look to make a difference in the lives of others that we do that and we put others first. I was talking to, to a colleague last night and, and I know that those who were at student lecture prayer last week would have enjoyed the banter, I'm sure, between Simeon and myself around the All Blacks and the Wallabies. But I have to do stand up here and say that the All Blacks are a culture that we can certainly take a great deal from. And one of my, my younger brother had a week with the All Blacks in the inner sanctum some years ago. And he said what, there was a lot of takeaways, but one of the main takeaways he took, a, he took from that week was their culture and some of the things that were non-negotiables. And this is something I'm trying to, to take away with me, and I, I think as Saints men, and as Maris men, this is certainly something I would think the Maris brothers do without even thinking about. But the All Blacks, as they walk into a room, if you're in New Zealand and you've never heard of the All Blacks, then you haven't you know, you haven't breathed or you haven't been there. So they are the most highest celebrities in, in the country. But if they were to walk into a room as an All Black, then the expectation is that they know that they are the least important person in that room. So they don't go in big noting themselves, they don't go in telling everybody how good they are, they don't go being loud, they don't go in, you know, making sure that everybody's staring and looking at them and pointing at them and saying how wonderful they are. Their goal is to make themselves the least important person in the room. And they do that quite humbly and they do that quite sincerely. So they'll go and meet people and they want to know other people's stories. It's very well documented. They, most people in New Zealand know the stories of the All Blacks. So they want to know a little bit more about the people that want to know about them. Their interests, you know, their names, the sorts of things they do. And I think as young men of saints, it's something we can look at too. We wear our uniform very, very well. We walk into a room or we do the walkathon as we did last week, or we're at social occasions, we don't have to be the loud ones. We're the ones who are dressed very well, we're very respectful, we look young, we look our hosts or any adults or any other people there in the eye, we have a conversation, we learn a little bit about them. I get a lot of people telling me how good you are and I see it every day, but I think it's really good for us to take stock on where we're at and what we're up to. A couple of things that have come across that we need to ensure that we do respect our cleaners better. I was disappointed in the last couple of days to see how much rubbish that myself and other students who were sort of running a little bit late to class had to clean up after you. It shouldn't happen. We give you bathroom facilities that we expect you to use properly. And yet I know that there are cleaners who've had to go in and clean up other boys' mess who haven't used the bathrooms properly. I mean, there are little things, as Izzy might have said, but the little things obviously say a lot about us as a big picture. So again, if I go back to what we were talking about, we want to make sure that this is a place that people look at, people want to be, become a part of. And I have mentioned before about our social justice, there's Red Shield Appeal this weekend, and I don't know there's a lot of boys who've already volunteered and asked to be involved in that, and I thank you for that. So just in closing today, I did want to take up a great deal of your time, but I think it is important that we continue to look at what I mentioned at the beginning, that we look to be a community where, whilst we're incredib incredibly important part of it, we are in our own minds just a small part of it, and we are not the most important person in the room, that we put others before ourselves, within the community, outside of the community, and when we are out in the community, and when I do see you at Can Central, because I'm giving you a heads up, I'm going to start to spend a bit of time around there after school, because I've heard there's some boys there who, who probably need to be reminded about whilst they look brilliant as they walk through the gate, they somehow let it slip between here and Cairns Central. So it's important that when you are out in the public, but importantly when no one else is watching you do the right thing, because it's the right thing to do. So I wish you all the very best for the rest of the week. Again, I thank our special guests for being here this morning, particularly Isaiah, and I wish him a safe trip back to Sydney. And again, just in closing, if we can finish the week off very well, take in on board what I've said, and ensure that we put others forward, and we put other people before ourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Just before we close today, gents, I just kind of want to take a moment to reflect on what today's assembly has been all about. We've heard stories of perseverance, histories of our college, the, the motto, no pain and no gain. 
These are stories of determination and perseverance in the face of difficulty. And it tells me that every single one of us in front of us in front of me today has a role to play. None of us are any more or less important than anyone else. And when things get difficult, and they will get difficult, we just have to keep our heads up high and keep moving forward. And I know that you all will. So in closing, I would like to invite you all to stand for the college hymn. Please be seated. Thank you very much. We have our cantors over here. So gentlemen, before we have a few uh, words, I'd, I'd like to invite our official party to um, leave Lennon Hall. Thank you.